his enemy mind. Might I induce you to a change of heart? Maximum Beast, Zero Beauty. That's the smartest X-Men we're talking about. Beast first appeared on screen in 1966's The Marvel Superheroes Show. This portrayal was based on his initial comic book design, which depicted him as a man with animalistic features, complete with a full bodysuit and a face and head mask. That same original design also appeared in a flashback episode of Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends in 1982 titled The Origins of Iceman. For many people, the first recognizable appearance of Beast was in X-Men the Animated Series in 1992. This is the first time we see his blue simian form, almost a cross between a blue-furred feline and ape with pointy ears and crazy black and blue hair. His long arms and prehensile feet allow him to walk upright or even upside down if there are any bars in the room. Strong and muscular, he's comfortable in both the briefs he uses for action and the long white lab coat and glasses he wears when offering scientific support back at the mansion. George Buza created an intelligent and thoughtful take on the character, being the brains of the team, a close friend of Professor X who fully supports his cause. In the episode Beauty and the Beast, we see that Hank possesses the heart of a gentle giant. He has enabled Carly, a blind woman, to see again, and the two find a romantic connection, but Beast knows they couldn't be together. To protect her, Hank makes the decision to keep his distance, holding on to the hope that a future where mutants and humans live in peace will one day allow their love to flourish. Why did this have to happen to me? I can't be close to any human. I can't take a chance of endangering them. My parents, my brothers and sisters, and now the woman I love. The same beast appeared alongside the other X-Men in Spider-Man the Animated Series in 1995. In these crossover episodes, it's revealed that one of Hank's old colleagues, Herbert Landon, is trying to destroy mutants with a chemical formula. The X-Men, including Beast, have to work with Spider-Man to thwart Landon's plans. No one can turn his back on another's pain. I may be a mutant, but I'm still human. How sad. We are all alone until we accept our need for others. Beast would get his next appearance in the second season of X-Men Evolution. This version becomes employed as the new chemistry and gym instructor at Bayville High School, relying on a special serum he created to keep his mutation under control. However, as the serum's effectiveness starts to wear off, he becomes more aggressive and eventually transforms into his blue beast form. With assistance from Charles and Spike, he recovers his senses and decides to join the X-Men, serving as a mentor to the team. His look in this show when he's the Beast is the simian form again with dark blue shorts and yellow belt, but he appears in a lab coat when in human form. Come on, there's plenty of time for fun later. It shouldn't take you more than an hour, so we'll meet back here in four hours. Skipping the first live-action X-Men movie, he only appeared in the second one, but not as Beast. In one scene, we see Hank McCoy as a guest speaker on a TV show, played by Steve Backick. In 2006's follow-up X-Men The Last Stand, we finally did get to see Beast as a full character in the live-action movie series, played by Kelsey Grammer. In the story, he's an ally of the X-Men rather than a member of the team, a former student of Xavier's School for Gifted Youngsters, and holds a prestigious position in the U.S. Cabinet as the Secretary of Mutant Affairs. Upon discovering the development of a mutant cure and the Brotherhood of Mutants' aggressive actions to counter it, he steps down from his governmental role to assist the X-Men in safeguarding the facility producing the cure located on Alcatraz Island. During this conflict, he uses the cure on Magneto. Beast, with his gorilla-like fur and hands but human proportions, appears as a hairy ordinary man in shaggy blue hair. This is largely due to the character being brought to life with a fur costume and makeup. However, CGI was also used but only for enhancing his movements in the fight scenes. He's seen wearing a suit while in his official job and when suited up, he wears black leather pants and a leather vest with yellow shoulder accents and the X symbol over his heart. I can assure you the government had nothing to do with this. Yeah, well, I've heard that before. My boy, I have been fighting for mutant rights since before you had claws. In the skit X-Men Academy from Robot Chicken, an animated action figure Beast appears briefly with the rest of the team before being vaporized by a sentinel. Beast reappeared in 2009's Wolverine and the X-Men, again in his blue ape form, this time wearing a blue and yellow vest suit with the X symbol displayed on his right leg. In his most notable appearance in the three-part pilot episode Hindsight, 
Beast remains at the X-Mansion's ruins following its destruction, Charles Xavier and Jean Grey's mysterious disappearances, and the X-Men's subsequent disbandment. As a result, he goes on to become one of the first X-Men that Wolverine re-recruits after Xavier tasks him with stopping Master Mold. We're still trying to get the stealth generator online. Otherwise, Genosha is going to see us coming miles away. Beast also featured in Marvel superheroes What The in 2009. This was a stop-motion web series using action figures of Marvel heroes. Right from the first seconds of the first episode, we see Beast and Cyclops taking on Mr. Sinister. But, but, but Confucius once said, everything has its beauty, but not everyone sees it. <laughs> Confucius? <laughs> also in 2009, Beast appeared in Astonishing X-Men, a motion comic that followed the critically acclaimed Joss Whedon run of the comic. This was the first time Beast appeared with a more feline appearance, similar in proportion to a human than an animal, but with long hair and a cat-like face. He battles in a pair of shorts that go up to his chest and down to his calves that are black, with a yellow X running across them. Maybe this is the secondary stage of my mutation. Or maybe Cassandra Nova was right. Maybe I'm devolving. In 2011's Marvel anime X-Men, Beast was a part of the team and again, it was a feline take on the character, this time almost lion-like with a blue face and long mane of blue hair around. He wears a black and yellow jacket when in action, and a long white coat when lecturing at the university. I'm afraid I must leave early, so I'll hand you over to my new teaching assistant, Mr. Cephalopod. In 2011, Beast appeared in the mad sketch titled The Clawfish, where a simple version of the character, inspired by the animated series one, Gate Crash is the set of The Office with the rest of the X-Men. In 2011, we got a new take on the live-action Beast in X-Men First Class. Nicholas Holt plays a young Hank McCoy, Originally, actor Benjamin Walker was slated for the role, but he withdrew from the film to take on the lead role in a Broadway musical. This rendition of Hank starts off employed by the CIA's Division X, his mutation giving him huge ape-like feet along with heightened speed, agility, and reflexes. Upon joining Charles' new X-Men team and developing romantic feelings for fellow teammate Mystique, McCoy brews up a serum from her DNA in a bid to cure himself causing his further mutation into a blue-furred, feline-like creature. Given the moniker Beast by teammate Havoc, McCoy assumes the role of the X-Men's pilot as they embark on a mission to thwart the Hellfire Club scheme to instigate World War III. This is supposed to be the younger version of Kelsey Grammer's Beast, but his face looks nothing like it and is more cat-like. He is always seen covered up by clothing as he attempts to hide his mutation, including the black and yellow battle outfit he wears during the mission. Don't mock me. I put him down immediately, please. In 2014's Days of Future Past, we got a dose of both live-action beasts. Once again, the young Hank is played by Nicholas Holt, and there's a cameo from Kelsey Grammer, too. Holt's younger Hank has been living a reclusive life with Charles Xavier after the events of First Class, and is recruited along with the professor by Wolverine. His face now looks more human again, closer to Kelsey Grammer's version and he's able to control his mutation with the help of the serum he created. Meanwhile, Grammar's Beast makes a brief appearance in the altered timeline. Moreover, a viral marketing website for the film unveils that Beast met his demise in 2015 at the hands of a furious mob of human protesters outside his upstate New York residence, though Wolverine's intervention alters this fate. We got another anime version of Beast in Marvel Disc Wars, The Avengers, wearing a dark, full bodysuit in this brief appearance. Holt returned in 2016 for X-Men Apocalypse. In this installment, he spends his time at the X-Mansion crafting a new jet in the basement. However, when the X-Men confront Apocalypse and his horsemen, McCoy embraces his beast form once again to aid in the battle, this time wearing a fully black armored battle suit like the rest of the team. In Deadpool 2, we briefly see Holt's Beast in a short cameo while Deadpool is in the mansion before he quickly closes the door to hide the team from Deadpool. Hank McCoy returned once again in Dark Phoenix in 2019. Nicholas Holt again reprises his role. After Jean Grey's powers spiral out of control and she accidentally kills Mystique, McCoy, consumed by anger, 
seeks assistance from Magneto to eliminate Gray. However, when the Dabari launch an assault on Earth to harness Gray's abilities, McCoy and Magneto unite with the X-Men to fend off the extraterrestrial threat. Subsequently, Xavier entrusts McCoy with the responsibility of overseeing Xavier's school for gifted youngsters while he takes a leave of absence. In this movie, we finally see Beast wearing the classic blue and yellow X-Men suit during the space mission. In the mid credit sequence of 2023's The Marvels, an alternate reality variant version of Beast, portrayed by Kelsey Grammer, this time in full CGI, makes a cameo appearance. This rendition collaborates with Maria Rambeau to probe incursions which they suspect are instigated by individuals from neighboring realities. You are now in a reality parallel to your own, which is of course impossible. In X-Men 97, George Booza returns to lend his iconic voice to Beast once again. The design of the character is also unchanged from the original show. He is the key supporting character that never seems to be the center of the story. In the second episode, he did have a standout moment, breaking to Storm that the loss of her powers appears to be permanent in a gut-wrenching moment. In episode 3, we see Hank trying to save Scott and clone Jean's baby from a techno virus given to him by Mr. Sinister, but he is again unable to help. I know who cloned Jean, a man so dark and twisted he can be described as nothing other than sinister. Beast's recent appearance in the Marvels confirms he's in the MCU, so him showing up in Deadpool and Wolverine is very likely. And with rumors of previous X-Men actors appearing as variants, we might even get a glimpse of the Nicholas Holt version. <laughs> 